Mother dies with a baby in her belly, but then her husband does something amazing. The birth of baby Gabrielle was eventful to say the least. As her mother Melanie suffered a cardiac arrest during delivery, she was declared clinically dead. There was little hope for her or the baby in her tummy, but then her husband did something amazing. Let's see what happened and how this story really ends. Melanie was pregnant with her second child and couldn't wait for what was to be a baby girl this time to arrive. She and her husband were over the moon they'd be having another addition to their family and a little sister for their son Brady. The pregnancy went great and it was not until week 39 that the signs of an impending delivery started to show. When Melanie was pregnant with Brady, she had done her best to find a gynecologist and hospital that held the same pro-life views as her. Sometimes decisions in a medical situation need to be made in a split second and Melanie wanted to make sure her unborn child's life would be weighted just as heavy or maybe even heavier than her own life in the case of an emergency. She believed this so strongly that she had been driving 25 minutes out of her way each checkup to an OBGYN she trusted. She found one though and felt like she would be in good hands with the second pregnancy as well. All signs pointed to an uneventful delivery. Her vital signs were great and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. But then disaster struck as if out of nowhere. As Melanie was lying in the hospital bed about to give birth and just after water had broken, she suddenly started to feel unwell. She told her nurse she was feeling lightheaded and nauseous as though she was about to faint but nothing indicated that something was seriously wrong with her. But suddenly, Melanie closed her eyes and slumped to one side, right in front of her physicians and her husband. She seemed to be suffering a seizure of some kind, completely unexpected, and her vitals were responding negatively immediately, with the heart rate and blood pressure plummeting to virtually zero. She slowly started turning blue and stopped breathing. With her daughter still in her tummy, the vital signs of the baby girl also started to drop at an alarming rate and decisions had to be made fast. What was wrong with Melanie? And what was the best approach to deal with both mother and unborn child right now? Code Blue was declared and a complete medical team rushed into the room. They unplugged the bed Melanie was in and rolled her to the operation room as fast as they could. Further diagnosis showed that Melanie was suffering from an amniotic fluid embolism it is a rare but serious condition that occurs when the amniotic fluid that surrounds the baby in the uterus during pregnancy enters the mother's bloodstream. It can have instant and devastating effects, very often fatal to the mother. As Melanie at this point was already declared clinically deceased, the medical team in the operating room decided to focus on the baby in her belly. They performed an emergency C-section to give the little girl the best chance at survival. Melanie's husband Doug was worried sick in the meantime. He had seen his wife being carted off and was told that it might have been the last time he had seen her alive. Her condition was serious and it was very likely she would not survive. And if she did, there was a high chance she had suffered brain damage and that she would never be the same again. It was heartbreaking news for Doug, who loved his wife fiercely and had not seen anything like this coming. He was feeling utterly helpless and afraid and did not know how to cope with it. So he turned to God and prayed. In his head, he repeated the words, God, I know that this is more than I can handle, which means you have a plan and purpose in this, and I trust you. But please, if it is your will, allow me to hold my wife again. As the terrible news regarding Melanie's condition spread from Doug to their friends and family, they also started to pray feverishly. Sitting in the waiting room, they all clasped hands and pleaded with God to please bring her back. They also took their prayers to social media and the message soon went viral. Within mere hours, Melanie had become one of the top 100 people tweeted about and the number one Google person in Phoenix. As a result, thousands of messages started to pour in of people all over the world that were also praying for Melanie, hoping for her recovery. Doug and Melanie's daughter was born in the meantime and taken to the nursery where Doug was allowed to visit her. Melanie stayed behind in the OR where the doctors were fighting for her life, but they had little hope for her and Doug still had no idea if his wife was going to live or die when he first held his newborn daughter. A nurse asked him what they were going to call her and he said Gabriella 
which means heroine of God. It was an immensely bittersweet moment for him, as you can imagine. He was happy his daughter was alive, but feared for his beloved wife. He was afraid he would have to raise this little princess by himself, and feeling so sad, he was unable to share this moment with the love of his life. The doctors had been able to resuscitate Melanie by now and get a faint pulse, but she was still in critical condition. After 48 long and scary hours, they were able to move her to the ICU, where they tried to keep her alive the best they could. Melanie's brother, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon, had at this point arrived at the hospital and asked to see her files. He saw that it was indeed not looking good for his sister. She was in a state of cardiovascular collapse and still getting worse by the minute. The whole family was by now asked to say their goodbyes because no one believed anymore that she was going to make it. It broke his heart, but Doug went to Melanie to say his last few words to her. He told her, I love you. I will always love you. Brady and Gabriella are beautiful and love you. If you have any fight left, then fight. Other family members also expressed their love to her, and in the meantime, everyone kept praying intensely. They prayed Melanie would come back from the brink and that Gabriella and Brady would not have to grow up without a mother. With pretty much all hope gone, prayers were all they had left. But Melanie did not get better. Her condition only seemed to worsen. She had received two blood transfusions already, but her blood kept clotting dangerously. And to make matters even worse, the doctors realized they had accidentally cut one of her arteries during the C-section. She was bleeding internally and needed another operation to stop it. All the blood had run into her belly and her stomach needed to be packed to absorb it all. It was as if her stomach was stuffed with towels and they needed to keep it open in the meantime. It seemed like her whole body was giving up. Her heart was barely pumping and her lungs had failed. She was relying on a respirator to keep her alive. The medical staff was waiting for the moment her system would indeed give up, as they saw little else they could still do for her. But inside, Melanie was somehow not ready to give up. She had such an urge to be able to see her family again, and a strong faith that whatever happened to her was supposed to happen. It was decided to move Melanie to another hospital, where they had better technology to treat her. She was hooked up to a so-called ECMO machine there to help her heart and lungs recover. To check her neurological functions, they lowered her level of sedation to a degree that she woke up for a few moments. Just as she regained consciousness, Doug walked into the room and looking at her, looking at him, he simply said, Hey, babe. Melanie had tears welling up in her eyes at this, and this was a clear sign to Doug that she was not brain dead or even neurologically impaired by a long shot. Suddenly, hope shimmered on the horizon again, but one more surgery was necessary to remove the packing from her stomach and stitch her back up. Again, it was all very borderline, but before Melanie went under the anesthesia, she was shown a picture of her baby girl Gabriella. In her own words, this must have awoken some kind of mama bear instinct in her, and she almost tried to climb out of the bed to go to her little girl. But then she was under, and a good few very scary hours of waiting commenced to see if Melanie would pull through the operation. But she did. It was almost a miracle, something none of her physicians had really expected in the beginning. But Melanie had been strong and perhaps stubborn enough to pull through. Within 24 hours, they were able to take her off the respirator and all medication except painkillers, and it became clear that she may just live. She and her husband could not have been more happy or grateful, and their reunion was simply amazing. Of most of this story, Melanie has no recollection, as she was unconscious pretty much the whole time. But upon hearing all that had happened later, she was astounded. She had basically died and then come back again, back to be able to hold and love her family again, and she felt a tremendous amount of relief and humility. Hearing about all the prayers on her behalf and all the support from the many people she had received, she felt her soul glow. And still to this day, she thanks God every day for having let her survive this and let her daughter survive this and coming through all this with her health intact. What a story, right? I'm so happy Melanie and little Gabriella came through it all unscathed. Give the video a thumbs up if you are as well. The more support we get, the more beautiful stories we can tell.